So we're here today, amen, praise God, to get a special charge, a special anointing. Because it takes the anointing to destroy the yoke. I don't care how intelligent we are. I don't care what tools we have uh, at our disposal to do a work for God. It takes the anointing. To get the job done. It takes God's approval. To get it done. So we're here today to invoke the presence of God. Amen. To come in our midst. And to lay his hands on us. And to do something in us. That will empower us to do. His bidding in these last days. And I wonder how many hearts are ready for that tonight. Uh oh. How many hearts are ready for that today? I'm going to bring a brief sermon and we're going to give the charge prayer. We're going to turn it over to our apostle. And then whatever he does from now on is up to him and Jesus. But I'm ready. How about you today? If you pray with me, I won't be long before you. Go on to the book of the prophet Hosea. Amen. We're going to just get one verse of scripture from that 10th chapter of the book of the prophet Hosea and that 12th verse Hosea 10 and 12 it says sow to yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you if I would have a thought today it would simply be prepare for rain Prepare for rain. God speaking to his people through Hosea. Because at this point in time, he was not pleased with their doings. Israel has slipped back into idolatry. And he's reproving them for their sin. God did not want them to continue to live in that condition. He wanted, praise God, to bring them out of that condition and restore them back to the place to where they were supposed to be. Because we know historically that Israel was God's chosen people or a people that God had chosen from among other nations that he might present, amen, himself to the rest of the world. Israel was to be an example of a holy God. They were to show the world, amen, praise God, how powerful God was. Amen, praise God, how he was a miracle worker. But more so, they were supposed to show the rest of the world that God is a holy God. A God that cannot and will not tolerate sin. And so they had failed in their mission, praise God, by going back into idolatry. But God was sending word. And told and was telling them in so many words, it's time to make some changes. 
Because, amen, I got a job for you to do. I call you for a particular job. And to get that job done, you can't continue to exist in the condition you're in. It's got to be some changes made in your lives. He said, now it's time to sow in righteousness. So I find out wherever God finds righteousness, then God will move. Sin stops up the brooks. It stops everything. God can't move. As powerful as God is and, and as miraculous as he is, God can't move where there's sin. Amen, Prager. You are find this out, praise God. God can come in a congregation and he can move up all up and down the aisles and all up and down the roads, praise God. He can bless certain folks on certain roads and skip over others because sin, amen, stops the move of God in anybody's life. If you study Israel's history and the history of the church, as long as they were walking in righteousness and walking according to the word of God, couldn't nobody stand before them. I mean, Israel won battles they should have lost because the power of God was working in their midst. They were outnumbered, praise God, sometimes five to one. But because of their righteousness and walking in righteousness, amen, God enabled them to defeat every enemy that came upon them. And then there were times when they should have won battles. But because, amen, of their unrighteousness, they found themselves running and fleeing from their enemy because God is a God of righteousness. Oh, Israel, I want you to uh, make some changes and sow to yourselves in righteousness. Amen. When you sow to yourselves in righteousness, then God says, I allow you to reap in mercy. I find out today God is a God of grace. He'll give you what you need to get the job done. Oh, I want to say this this morning, church, we, up, we, we, we got a monumental task before us. Amen. We got a job before us. We got some mountains that need to be moved. Amen. In our lives, we got some things need to be straight out in our lives. We got some souls that, that need to be saved, some people that need to be set free. But listen, Pega, I know a God today that will give us the grace to get the job done. This is what I love about the work of God. God never told us, to, amen, to, to do this work by ourselves. He said, if you go, I'll go with you. He's a God of grace and a God of mercy. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Then he said, break up your fallow ground. Oh, God, let me just dwell on that just for a little bit, and then we're going to get out the way. Break up your fallow ground. Amen. Anybody know anything about farming? Fallow ground is ground that have once been tilled, once have been worked. Amen. Praise God. Once, once have been broken up, but it's been allowed to lay dormant for a period of time. And when it's allowed to lay dormant for so long, that ground gets hard again. Uh huh. It becomes hard and crusty. They call that fallow ground. Ground that have been worked but allowed to lay dormant. Amen. Pray God. Spiritually, praise God. God is saying it's time to, amen, go back and break up some things in your life and, 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 and reinstitute some things in your life. Things you used to, once used to do, but now it's laying dormant. Amen. Time to go back and break up that ground. Amen. Pray God. Farmers know the importance of breaking up fallow ground. Amen. See, praise God. I don't care how the rain come. Pray God. If, if, if the ground had been broken up, it'll fall on fallow ground and just roll off to the side. Uh-huh. Fallow ground, amen, pray God, cannot be penetrated by the rain. Thus, fallow ground cannot bring forth fruit. You cannot sow seed in fallow ground because the ground is too hard. Whatever fall on a roll off to the side. Can I get a witness here? Listen, we're in a time now when God is getting ready to send the rain. Do I have any witnesses here tonight? What we felt this week, praise God, was an outpouring of the spirit of the true and the living God. Amen. Wasn't no shaking, jaking, and quaking going on this week. This was the real thing. I don't know about you, but I felt the real Holy Ghost this week. I saw the real anointing in the, uh, uh, hey, I saw the real anointing in this place this week. As the choir sung and the ministers preached and the musicians played, I saw the real power of God. And I know it's God because the Bible let us know, amen, praise God, when the church leave out of here, it's going to leave out of here with power and authority and the glory of God in it. And so God is prepping us for these last days and getting us ready, pray God, for the his last charge, hey amen, that we're that we going to pray God, put on the devil, this last onslaught, this last assault, we're going to put on the devil and snatch these souls out the five brands of hell. 
Can I get a witness here? God is getting us ready for this last day move. And I'm telling you today to get to be a part of this last day move, you got to have the power of God. Can I get a witness now? Amen. The devil, amen, he know all of our tricks. He know all our schemes and none of man's tricks and schemes is fooling the devil no more. What we need now is raw power. Can I get a witness here? We need God to send the rain, but before God can send the rain, got to be some fallow ground broken up. Oh, give me a couple of minutes. Got to be some fallow ground. It's time for all of us to search our lives and see do we have any fallow ground in there. You know, ground that once, amen, praise God, been used and broken up, but now we've allowed it to lay dormant. We got to break up this ground before the rain comes. Can I get a witness? Here. Now I got a feeling God gonna pour out his spirit today in a mighty way because there's a lot of anticipating hearts in the house tonight and I, not only that but it's just time for God to do something for us. It's just our time. Tell somebody the name is our time. I have no doubt about it. Full gospel is our time. God done brought us out on the will of time for such a time as this. God, God, God knew it was going to come a day, praise God, a week preaching, week teaching, and week living. So God kept some folk alive and kept us going on for such a time as this. In these dark days that we're living in today, God, amen, Pega, kept a light, amen, shining. So folk, amen, can know how to come out of sin, come out of the darkness of sin. So I know today that this this is our time. Can I get a witness here? Hey Amen. If it wasn't our time, God would allow us to be killed years ago. Some of you should have been dead 10 years ago, 5 years ago, but God kept you alive because it's your time now. Can I get a witness here? Hey Amen. How many know the devil tried to take you out many times? Tried to get you, hey Amen, get you discouraged and get you to give up on God. But every time you found yourself, hey Amen, sitting on the seat of discouragement, Hey Amen. The Lord will speak to your heart and say, get up and keep on going. Can I get a witness here? When you got low and looked like you couldn't go no further, something down inside of you kept telling you to go head on. That was God saying, I brought you to this time. I didn't bring you this far for you to fall out now. It's our time now. Can I get a witness here today? It's time for the rain. There's some rain coming. I'm in how many feel it? I'm in feel the rain beginning to come. But what I want to pick up make plain today is Amen. God sitting in the rain ain't gonna do no good if you're gonna fall on fallow ground. Can I get a witness here? Hopefully this week, amen. Some grounds have been broken up with that turn plow of the word of God. I tell you, I never seen these men so anointed they were this week. Can I get some of them starting to scare me? Are y'all hear me today? These men of God, God had his hand on them. Send in that word. I said send in that word to break up that fellow ground in our lives. Because God is getting us ready for the rain. Can I get a witness here? Oh Lord, you got to be ready for what God is doing ready to do. And I want you to ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you ready to take? For what God is getting ready to do. Are you preparing for this rain that God is getting ready to pour out? Break up your fallow ground. Can you say that? Hey, Lordy. I'm back through here. Five preaching minutes. I'll be through with this here. But you got to get ready for the rain. Can I get a witness now? That's what God is trying to do for us right now this week. Get us ready for this last day I'll pour it. But some ground got to be broken up. Can I get a witness? It's time for some self-examinations. Time for us to go back and look and take a long look at ourselves. And ask ourselves, do I have what I started with? Can I get a witness? Am Am I, am I as dedicated uh, as I was uh, when I started this thing? Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, uh, have I got cold? Uh, have I become indifferent? Uh, have I got lax? Uh, have I got slack? Uh, oh Lord, uh, 
if you found some lightness uh, and some slackness, uh, it's time to break it up uh, because God can't send the rain uh, on that hard ground. Uh, Can I get a witness here today? Are you praying like you used to pray? Oh Lord, we got to go back and warm up our prayer closets. Y'all ain't talking to me. We got to go back and warm up our prayer closet. Like a possible was saying last night, a huff ain't going to get it no more. You got to have some power in your huff. If you got a huff, you got to have some power in it. Can I get a witness now? And prayer will bring the power of God in your life. Can I get a witness? We got to break up that solid ground of prayer. When you're praying like you ought to pray, you can hear God's voice when he talk to you. When you pray like you ought to pray, it's not hard to be obedient to leadership. When you pray like you ought to pray, it ain't no trouble coming to church and giving God a praise. We got to break up that fallow ground of prayer so that God can send the rain. Can you say that? Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, break it up. Uh Uh-oh, break it up. Cause the rain is coming. It's time to break it up. Can I get a witness here? Gotta break up that solid ground of faithfulness. Are you as faithful as you used to be? Or is every little thing not getting in your way from serving God and working for Jesus Christ? Are you praying or falling back on excuses? Why you can't do this and you can't do that in the house of God? Well, beloved, it's time to break up. That fallow ground Cause the rain that God get ready to send Not gonna help you To that ground Is broken up God looking for some folk That'll say Lord If you need somebody Here am I Send me He tired of folk talking about Get somebody else I don't have the time Well my brother and sister Let me tell you something Your time is God's time Because of that God Are y'all hear me now? Gotta break up that fallow ground of faithfulness and obedience. I got about two preaching minutes. Fell the obedience. We gotta get back to being obedient to God, obedient to His Word, obedient to our pastors, obedient to our first ladies, obedient to our auxiliary hands, obedient to everybody that's in authority, obedient to our bosses on the job y'all in here we got to get back to being obedient can i get a witness we asking too many questions when the pastor says something we talking about why and i don't see that you don't suppose to see it because you ain't the pastor get back to being obedient like you were when you first got saved when the preacher said we don't do this you say yeah man of god but now we asking why god can't send the rain in your life uh, until you break up uh, that fallow ground. Uh, say yes, somebody. <laughs> Folk can lay hands on you all day long and all night too. You can shake like jello. Oh, all day from head to toe you can run these aisles till your tongue fall out you can roll till you cover with lint can I get a witness here but none of it not gonna do any good if the ground ain't broken up it'll just roll off I used to wonder why folk can shout on Sunday and fight on Wednesday God I mean the power of God be all in the house and they be bucking jumping and shout and when the night they done pull their shoes off ready to fight somebody on the parking lot what in the world how in the world can that be it look like they got blessed the law was all over God said son fallow ground I was all over 
them. My spirit was upon them, but it couldn't get in there where it ought to get. Cause that ground was hard. But church, it's time out for shout no Sunday and fight no wind. It's time to shout on Sunday and shout on wind and Saturday and Friday. Whatever day you have, church, it's time to lift up Jesus every day. But that ground in our lives, in your life, in my life that's laying toward, gotta be broken up. Can I get a witness in the night? We can do a better work and a quicker work if folk just be obedient. Stop asking questions and just be obedient. When God said jump, don't say why. Just ask him how high. Sometimes we don't have time to say why. Somebody dying while we're trying to explain why trying to give you an understanding and sometimes we try to explain it to you you still won't understand it we just got to be obedient we learn a few scriptures learn how to quote John 3 16 lay hand on somebody and they toe ache got healed and then can't nobody tell us nothing y'all got quiet now leader can't tell us nothing no more cause you know, we know something. We feel Jesus and the Lord speaks to me. Uh-huh, like he speaks to the leader. No, he don't. Oh, let the devil tell you that lie. God told him, I talked to y'all in dreams and visions. He said, but Moses, I talked to him face to face. Mm. Cause see, if you ain't spiritual minded, you don't know what a dream of God know how. Some folk having these dream because they ate too many cabbages before they went to bed. Too many greens for they went to bed, too many them thick pig feet for they went to bed and have a dream of talking about God show me. That wasn't God, that was them pig feet. We gotta break up some ground here. So God can send the rain. Can I get a witness here? I'm telling you today, I gotta close them, close my Bible. Church, amen, prayer, we in a transition. We going through a transition. Simply put, we're going through some changes. And change sometimes is good. You have to change some things to keep alive, to stay productive, to progress. God is taking his people through some transitions, mm -hmm. bringing us out of some comfort areas that we didn't got used to being in. Uh -huh. Putting us out there on the limb of faith where we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh oh, from here on in, there ain't gonna be no cakewalk. If you can't take the heat now, it's time to get out the kitchen. If you can't believe God now, you never believe God. If you don't believe His word now, you never believe His word. Because believing God and believing His word and standing on God's word is what's gonna get us through this time. I'm telling you, I used to hear Apostle say this years ago. He said, gonna come a time when the church is gonna get right back in the row like it was when they first came in, believing God for their mere existence. Look like we're getting back to that time. We got to believe God to put food on the table every day. Clothe us and take care of us. That means we got to have a higher level of faith in our lives. That means it had to have a higher level of faith. That means all our spiritual faculties got to be in working order. All the weapons of our warfare got to be working. Got to be loaded today. Got to have on the arm of God, all of it. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, we got to prepare for this rain that God is sending in this day and time. And I hear the rain coming. Tell us about it as a sound neighbor of an abundance of rain. Now I believe we ain't seen nothing yet. But we here today to get charged up. God to lay his hands on us. Send that rain in our lives. But we won't ever be the same. We won't start out and doing good and slump back. Next time, next year we come to convocation, we just as low as we can be. We come to convocation next year, we ought to be on a higher plane. 
ought to have a new shout. Ought to have a new testimony. Ought to have a new outlook on life. And a new enthusiasm. And a renewed determination. Because the rain going to fall on some good ground. Preparing for rain. I'm about finished. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray this prayer. And then we're going to give it to the apostle. And he's going to go as God leads him. But I hope today that your heart is ready. Hope that your mind is fixed today. Hope the only thing you came for this morning was to let God lay his hands on you and submit yourself to whatever God's will is for your life. Oh, Jesus. I want you to start dismissing everything else out of your mind. Forget about whether you packed everything or, or whether you left the iron on in the room. Forget about that. And I want every heart and mind focus on the Lord. Pastor Boyce read that scripture, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, God said, I will hear from heaven. We're going to pray and invoke God this morning. We're going to believe God to hear us and to come in and answer our request. Hands raised, halala kandorobosa to heaven today. Halalo shake up shantaya. Thank you, Jesus. Halala handololobo sike. Hey, glory. Halala handololobo di osha. Oh, shake up a handololo kantaya. Thank you, Jesus. Great God in heaven. Halalo kandorobo sike. We're here today in your holy presence, God, because we look into thee, because there's no other help that we know. We're looking toward thee today, oh God, because you are our help, our strength. You are our everything. We're calling on your name, I your shot. We come today, God, for you to lay your hands on us. That you would impart unto us your anointing. Your power, your presence, your spirit, that we may do thy holy will, God. That you may grant unto your servants more boldness. That we may declare the thing that we've heard and seen of thee. Help us to tell a lost and dying world that you are a savior. The sick world that you are a healer. Those that are bound that you can set them free. But we need your power, God. We need your presence to go with us. And we call it on your wonderful name today. God come in the house today in a special way today. Special way. Special way, God. Fill the building with your presence. God walk up and down every aisle in the place. Lord, stop by every seat in the house. Lay your today God hey let your rain let your rain let your rain come today God anoint us for your service never let us be the same today God but anoint us for your divine service in this day and time give us a mind to say yes to your will as you lead us and guide us give us a mind to say yes anoint us to work the more with our leaders to follow them as they follow you. To help fulfill this vision, God, you made us a part of. Lay your hand on us, Lord, and your shake. Hey, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, touch us. From the inner sanctum of the inner chair of our sanctified soul, touch us, Lord. Touch our hearts today. Touch our minds, God, and touch our spirits. 
God, amen, give us that holy charge to go forth in the power of your spirit that your mighty will might be done today, God. Keep us as one, God, as you and your son, your spirit are one. No division or no schism in the body, but keep us unified, God, in your holy way. And God, you do this, we be so careful. And we charge every child of God in this house tonight. We charge you in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim in victory of every foul spirit. Everything that's not like God. Everything that come to hinder, we claim in victory. And we charge you with victory in Christ Jesus.